book of Nehemiah here before we get to the Lord's Supper. Chapter number four. Just read a few verses together. We're going to just kind of look at a handful of verses as we finish up chapter four this evening. And uh, we'll start in verse 7, and I'll read down through verse 9. It says, But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashtonites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, they were very wroth. And conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Let's pray here tonight. Uh, Father, thank you for the privilege to gather around the words of life. We pray that you take some truth here and apply it to our lives. Help us to see how the enemy's at work, even around us. And uh, Lord, open our eyes to uh, where you're at work. And uh, Lord, how to turn our hearts towards you. Uh, Lord, we love you. Uh, bless tonight. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We did look in the first part of chapter 4 uh, about the, uh, the uh, criticism of the enemy and how he uses uh, words to hinder God's work. And, and really, again, that's, that's what we're looking at here. But here we see how the enemy uses really in many ways gossip and you know, for the purpose of intimidation. And uh, um, we, we, need to, we need to look here at verse 8. It says, uh, uh, these enemies of, of God's work conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. And here we see a, a conspiracy beginning, and, and it's, it, it's, it's they, they were working together. They're talking how they're going to how they're going to uh, um, um, hinder God's work. Okay, so remember this thing that Nehemiah is doing, and this work that uh, uh, is being done is not man's work; it's God's work. As we saw in chapter three and verse number one, they sanctified it. Why? Because it was a holy thing. We had. Um, a man who was content in his blue collar job to 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 continue to do what what he was doing, and God spoke to him, gave him a call on his life, and led him out of that job and into the the work of God, and, and to give his life uh, to, to to do something that was completely contrary to what he was used to doing. Fascinating, isn't it? How God can take a, a blue collar man and turn him into a, uh, a you know a cupbearer and turn him into uh, one of the uh, one of the head uh, uh, project managers on one of the biggest projects that the, the nation of Israel had seen uh, really at that time. And, 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 and I guess next to the temple, maybe the second biggest, I guess, if you want to say it that way. And, uh, uh, um, and totally turned his life around and turned him from, from a servant into a leader. And uh, we see that this isn't the work of Nehemiah. This is the work of God. This is God's work. It's a sanctified, holy project. And uh, when we see the enemy coming together, the, the conspiracy or the desire of it all is to hinder the work. The enemy is working overtime, my friends, to hinder the work here. Right. Uh, he doesn't want you to become effective. He doesn't want this church to be effective. It's, he's conspiring right now, and, and he's using different voices to conspire against the work that's getting done here and in churches all around the world. Do, do you know why the enemy does this? It's because he hates God. Right. And he hates God's work. First uh, Peter 5 says that the enemy is as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. And uh, he's going about looking to devour and to quench and to put out the work of God. But just remember, as we looked at last week, the enemy can't kill you. But he can get you to stop working. And that's the theme here. Is it, it's, it's where the, the enemy, notice at the end of verse 8, to hinder it, to stop it. To, to be that, not just a thorn in the side, but to be a roadblock to the work going forward. It says in, in verse 9 that they, we made our prayer unto God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Now, now notice in verse 10 how things begin to change a little bit here. And Judah said, uh, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed. We're getting weak. 
There's, there's much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. All of a sudden, the strength of the men, now that they're hearing of this conspiracy, that there's, there's a big hindrance coming and that the enemies of, of the wall building are now working to push against. And we already bear the burden of getting rid of the rubbish and building up the wall, but our, our strength is decaying. It's wilting away every single day. Notice verse 11, our adversary said they shall, uh, they shall not know, neither see till we come in the midst of them and slay them and cause the work to cease. Verse 12, and it came to pass when the Jews which dwelt by them came and they said to us ten times, from all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. You see, the Jews had heard the conspiracy. Uh, they had heard what we could say in verse 11, the rumors that the enemy began to spread about the fact that they were coming to kill the people, that they were going to stop the work. So we see this, this gossip and this, these rumors being spread and this intimidation coming, and, and we see the enemy using lies that they were going to come and slay them because they were they were doing something that was contrary to what what was the norm the uh, the status quo of the day and the enemies didn't want the walls to be built up that meant protection for them that that meant that uh, they could do uh, things that they couldn't have done before now the enemy doesn't want that to happen they can't just come in and out anytime they want and we see the enemy again using things like lies because the enemy is a liar and the father of it. But just remember this, folks, is, is we're dealing with an enemy uh, that has no strength to take away your life. He has no ability to do that. I'm always reminded when we think about the work of the enemy, and I'm not saying the enemy isn't strong because his ability to manipulate us mentally is unmatched to others. Isaiah chapter 14, I think it's right around verse 16, it says... Uh, that, uh, that those that will see thee will wonder, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Mark that down, my friends. There's coming a time when we're going to see the enemy cast down. We're going to look at him. We're going to go, him? This, this? This is the one that stood in my way that whole time? This is the one that made me afraid? Him? Ugh. Oh. Oh. Romans 29 uses the word for uh, the idea of gossip for the word whisperers. And the idea is a secret slander. And, 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 and the whole point in all of this, as we think about the work of God and the work of God that wants to go forward and God's looking to move forward in this church, there's, these, there's the secret slander that works in the shadows, that works in the background, that, that only gets leaked out in such ways to have effect. Okay? That's why I always say we, we need to be careful uh, as you communicate with, with people, as you listen to people, not to absorb everything like it's the truth. Okay, uh, Just because somebody says something doesn't necessarily make it the truth because, uh, again, the enemy is not looking to kill you. He is just looking to get you to stop working. If he can take the wind out of your sails, your boat won't go forward anymore. And the enemy is just so good at doing that. <clears throat> You'll see the end result here. Uh, um, you know, where am I looking for this here? Oh boy, I lost my spot now. Isn't that funny? <clears throat> oh, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Verse 14. Uh, and he looked, uh, uh, well, let's read 13. Therefore, I set a, 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 the lower places behind the wall. And on, on the higher places, I even set people and their families with their swords and their spears and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said to the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, what does he tell them? Be not afraid. Do you know why the enemy conspires to, to manipulate the work of God happening through your life and in this church and in other churches just like ours? For the, you know, for the gospel and for, for discipleship. You know why he conspires? Why he uses rumors and he spreads lies about, about things that he's going to do and things that are going to happen and, you know, the direction of that church this and the direction of that church there. You know why he does that? Because when he does that, it makes people afraid. 
Am I really right, a part of the right thing? Are we really going the right direction? Is this really what God wants us to do? I mean, have we been missing it all this time? I mean, do we really need these walls built? Weren't we just fine without the walls? And do we really need those gates back up? I mean, wasn't it okay that we had those gates down? I mean, isn't it okay? I mean, we've been living like this for so long. Isn't it okay to just stay this way? Who is this Nehemiah guy anywhere? You see how those, the, the, those seeds of, 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 of intimidation come in, and, and, and it's not like uh, there's, there's this person standing up and, and threatening everybody, that you know, but it's just these little sowing seeds that go down. And, and there's this intimidation that happens that brings in fear. I wonder if Nehemiah is really leading us the right way. But just remember, the whole point of all of how the enemy works and, and gossip and all this stuff is to put your attention on a man and to take your eyes off of God. And when you begin to look at a man and when you begin to analyze a man, listen, you're going to find failures, flaws, and weaknesses at every inch. You, you begin to analyze my life. Listen, I will tell you, uh, you, come and ask me, I'll tell you my flaws. Okay? And if you don't believe me, my kids will tell you the rest. Okay? And if you don't believe them, ask my wife, she'll tell you the rest. <laughs> But the point of all of this is, is, is to take your attention off of God and put your attention on the weaknesses and failures of a man and the work of men to bring fear into your life, to, 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 to bring about a, a fear that ceases the work. Because remember, the whole point is to get the work hindered, is to cause the work, verse 11, to cease. We can't let this keep going. The momentum is picking up. The wall is being built. The bricks are going up. The people have set their mind to the work. They're actually getting excited about what God's doing. Those men are starting to pray. They're believing God for some amazing things. We can't let this go forward. We need to hinder this work. We need it to stop before they actually reach that town. Before they start sending preachers. Before that church does start sending missionaries. Before kids start believing God. Before dads start getting on the ground of faith. We can't let it keep going because the bricks are going up. The gates are being repaired. It's got to stop. The easiest way to make it stop. Fear. Do we really want to do this? Do we really want to keep going that direction? Do we really think that this is going to end well? I mean, who knows what that preacher's going to do? He's got dogs on his socks this week. <laughs> yeah, listen, haven't we all been affected by the fear? Isn't that intimidation that the enemy uses, isn't that real? I mean, think about it. Folks, when's the last time you shared the gospel with someone? And just take inventory. Why not? Fear. At the end of, in the bottom of all the excuses and all the reasons and all the things, your heart starts pounding and you start listening to the enemy who all he wants to do is to hinder the things that God's doing in your life. He doesn't want you to take that step of faith. He doesn't want you to see victory in that area of your life. Why? Because he's trying to hinder the work. And he's bringing fear into your life. He's whispering into your ear and into your heart things that are totally untrue and completely contrary to the work of God. Why don't we get involved in disciple making and great commission work and gospeling? Why don't we do those things? Why aren't we moving forward in our personal lives and in our corporate lives? Why? When those things aren't happening, the work has ceased. It's because we started listening Fear the enemy is trying to bring into our hearts and our lives. We've succumbed. We've stopped. The work has ceased. Verse thirteen again, and, and verse sorry, and verse fourteen, and, and, and Nehemiah, and he looked, and he, and, and he's seeing that the strength of the bears of the burdens are, is decayed, and, and there's so much rubbish, and, and he's seeing that the spirit of the men, verse ten so that they're not able to build the wall. He's seeing that the enemy's 
lies are now taking root and people are starting to believe it and the, and the work is slowing down and, and it's being hindered. And, and what does Nehemiah say in verse 14? Be not afraid. Amen. Don't be afraid of him. Isn't that the echo of, of scripture over and over again? Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid, church. Don't be afraid. He hath not given you the spirit of fear. And when you can mark it down in your heart, when that moment of, 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 of faith comes and God's leading you to step out and do something for him and, and continue to put that brick into that wall of God's work here at Bethlehem Baptist Church and your heart wells up in fear and, and you begin to think, I can't do this. I shouldn't do this. This is too heavy for me. I can't be a part of this. I don't even know what I'm doing. Why am I here? I should leave this church. I should go somewhere else where it's a lot easier. I can hide in the back corner. I can hide here. I can hide there. I don't have to do it. You can mark it down, my friend. That is not God talking to God doesn't talk to you like that. God doesn't lead you that way. That is the enemy, my friend. And he's intimidating you with lies and gossip. That word fear there, obviously, in, in Timothy, is, is the, it, it's, uh, it lacks the definite article, which gives us the idea of the spirit of a coward. Or the spirit of timidity, which we had talked about in, in, the, in the table this morning uh, with the men and, 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 and uh, a good conversation we had. And we were saying, you know, why aren't we living this way? You know, where is this? And well, it's, it's men. <laughs> men, we've, we've grown timid. And we've stopped being spiritual leaders. We've stopped building the wall. We've listened to the lie. We, we are embracing the fear of a culture that's ready to shame us at, the, at, at any moment. They're ready, to, they're, they're ready to, to, to persecute us on social media, and we're afraid of that moment. What are people going to say about us? There's a tweet about you, Pastor Weber, that went viral. Who cares? <laughs> Praise God. I don't know. Whatever. What does that mean anyway? There's tweets about all kinds of weirdos out there that go viral. And again, you know, I, I, I say to, to our men this, this evening, and, and, and for those who will listen in, you know, down the road, take off the pink shirts and the skinny jeans and put on the tool belt and the work pants. We've got work to do. We've got God's work to do. It's time for us to suit up and get going and get out our, our tools and, and, and start building the wall for God. Amen. Our wives need strong spiritual leaders. They don't need men who are, who are, who are, are uh, bowing down and, and who are timid around a society that, that, that has only power in the social media realm. Listen, if social media was so, uh, so effective, then, then, then Donald Trump would be president here today, but he's not. Okay? He's not. And, and, and the reality is, is, my friend, when it comes to the work of God, God is telling you, I am with you. Isn't that what he says here? Be not afraid of them. Why? Remember the Lord. Remember God. And what does God say? I'm not going to forget you. I'm not going to walk away from you. I'm not going to leave you without. You're, you're not without me. If this is my work and this is something I've asked you to do, then I'm there to provide for you. I'm there to strengthen you. I'm there to protect you. Amen. And I'm going to take care of you. And we're going to see this thing happen. Notice the, the Nehemiah says he encourages the heart of the men there. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and, and fight uh, for your brethren and your sons and your daughters and your wives and your houses. And notice when the enemies heard that, that it was known unto us that God had brought their counsel to naught. So we can see that this, this secrets that they were building, this enemy was using these things to conspire against them. But when God revealed to the people that this was the enemy's work, this wasn't God's work, uh, we returned all of us to the wall. Everyone to his work. Man, praise God. I love this situation. I love what's going on here. They're getting excited. They're like, hey, wait a second. That was, 
That's just the enemy. We've got God on our side. He's going to take care of us. Amen. When did he ever not take care of us? He always took care of us. Listen, he's always provided for us. Praise he's God. never left us in want. Hallelujah. You know, in many ways, Nehemiah is saying, did you forget why you were here? Come on, guys, pay attention to what's going on. This is, this is the enemy. This is Sanbal and Tobiah and Geshem and the Ammonites and the Amorites and the Mosquitoites and all the other bites that go along with them. They're against God's work. But we're for God, and he's with us. And he's on our side. He's not on their side. He's on our side. And the whole story of how we got to this point was, God, don't forget about God. What are you doing here? It's not to start a work and then back out. It's to, it's to see this thing all the way through. This is a holy work. This is God's work. My friend, listen. <clears throat> Don't lose track. When you're, when, when you're out there and God's leading you and God's talking to you, whether you're on a job site or in your home or in your community, in, in somewhere, and God's leading you to talk to somebody or pass out a track or do something, don't buy into fear. Remember the Lord. Amen. He's on your side. He's the one leading you to do this. Amen. He's the one guiding you. He's going to protect you. Listen, that person's not going to beat you up. And if they do, okay. The Lord's just going to give you another opportunity to talk to an ambulance worker or a first responder, right? <clears throat> I had a night, man. I'll, I'll tell you, it was it was it was wonderful. Uh, and it, you know, whether it was out street preaching or whatever, me and my buddy Dave one time when we were just new Christians, he, I was about a year old in the Lord, and he, he had just gotten saved, and, and uh, we were like, man, what are we going to do tonight? We're two bachelors. What are we going to do? And I said, let's let's go see if the the nursing home will let us to go in and preach there. We were looking for an opportunity to do something. So we went over to the nursing home, and the, it was after 4 o'clock, and the, the activities director was gone, and we could come back later. We're like, all right, where are we going now? I'm like, I don't know. Let's get in the car. So we got in the car. We prayed, Lord, where do you want us to go? Lord, lead us. And that night, from man, from one stop to the next, and we, we found this guy and began to talk to him about the Lord. And we, we met these people, and we're at this truck stop, and we're over here. And, man, five hours, six hours later, it's the middle of the night, and it's like, wow. We talked to so many people tonight and gave the gospel and did all these things. Why? Because God was leading us along and God led us to do these things. And it wasn't scary. Right. It was fun. Amen. It was a wonderful night. Right. Listen, my friends, don't forget why you're here. You're not here to build your own kingdom. You're not here to accumulate uh, land to yourself or a reputation or a bank account or a heritage here you're here to make disciples so that when you go you leave people in your place you're here to, to send your treasures ahead to another place and if we're not doing that then what are we doing Remember God, my friend. Amen. Remember who you are serving. Remember why he put you here. Right. Your time isn't very long. Praise God, the men in, in, in the story here of Nehemiah, I hate the word story, uh, the real life account of the Nehemiah, the 52 days, and they got the work. They set their mind to the work. They had the hindrances. They had the challenges. Uh, but listen, they, they got the work done. They wavered at times, and we're reading about that right now as the enemy came after them. It was real. But at the end of the day, there was somebody who stood up in front of them and said, listen, man, don't be afraid. Stop living like this. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our heads together. Get out those swords. Get out those spears. And we see how that worked in verse 21. So uh, we labored and work, and, and, and half of them held spears from the, from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. And, and likewise, at the same time, said I to the people, let everyone with a servant lodge in Jerusalem and the night uh, may be on guard unto us and labor in the day. And, and half of them would, would stand guard and the other half would, uh, would, would work. And, and, and then they would switch around and they would work together. They didn't stop working. They just figured out, okay, this is how the enemy's going to work. So this is how we're going to work. And God's going to fight for us. And he's going to use us. And he's going to protect us. And the work is not going to stop. Right. Amen. 
Has the work stopped here at Bethlehem Baptist Church? stop being afraid. Amen. And we can get back to the work that God has for us. There's souls that need you to talk to them. There's disciples that need you to, to minister to them. There are families that desperately are crying out tonight for the gospel. The Macedonian call isn't just the Macedonian, my friend. It's right here in the, in the city of Rogue. Right. There are young people who are being indoctrinated in our school systems in this community right now with things that are so anti-God and they're so mixed up and they're so confused and they desperately need the God of heaven to straighten them out. Amen. Who's going to go to them if we don't? Amen. Oh, you can't talk to them? It's illegal? They're going to put you in jail forever? Uh, you know what's going to happen? You're going to talk to them and Brother Roy's going to have to come over and arrest you. <laughs> Listen, that's the end. We used to stand on the street corner and, and with a half a mile hailer and preach and, and, and cry out in the cities. And they'd yell and they'd scream and they'd threaten. What could they do? Yell and scream and threaten. That's it. Especially when you stand there with a baby in your arm. <laughs> what are they, they going to do? I had one guy walk up to me one day with a gave me a piece of paper, and all it had on it was a dot. You know what that means? That was an innuendo or a, a thought of saying, the last thing you're going to see is a dot. And that's what they say happens to you before you get shot. They were threatening to kill me on the corner for telling people about Jesus. Do you know what we did? I tucked it in my pocket and kept on preaching. What were we going to do? Go home? There's no reason to stop the work, my friends. He can't kill you. You have eternal life. All he can do is make the work to cease. That's all he can do. Let's remember the Lord tonight. Amen? Amen. And let's ask God to give us an opportunity this week to start working for him. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege to gather together in the word of life. Thank you tonight that we don't need to be afraid. Fear not, you say. And Lord, thank you that you didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And uh, Lord, we're just uh, praising you tonight and thanking you tonight for this wonderful truth. And Lord, we're just asking you to work in our hearts. Lord, where fear has set in and gripped us, we pray, Lord, you would set us free. Even tonight, that you would speak those words that I am with you, and I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Lord, surely there's some, maybe many, maybe even lots here tonight that would say that they've been gripped by the lie of the enemy, and the work has stopped because they've believed. Lord, I'm asking for you to set them free. And Lord, we're asking for you to do these things because your work needs to go forward. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Uh, I'm going to have the pianist just play through a stanza here before we go to the, a couple of stanzas uh, as, the, as we go transition to the Lord's Supper. But uh, just take a minute and reflect on the truth tonight. Are you putting bricks in the wall? Are you part of the work? Are you laboring for the Lord?
faith freedom. Uh, Lord, you're, you're doing things in our hearts, bringing us to faith and leading us along. And Lord, where we need that little bit extra of encouragement this week, do that. Lord, maybe there's a workmate that needs a gospel tract or a word of witness. Maybe there's a neighbor or Lord, somebody in our community that you put on our heart, a family member. Now, Lord, whoever that may be, I pray this week would be a week of great victory where, Lord, we would put that brick in the wall this week. And where we wouldn't listen to the lies of the enemy anymore. We would stop beating them. Bless, Lord, we pray these decisions tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If I could have the deacons come, and let's get ready for the Lord's Supper.